bio, we are continuing on with section two, uh, energy flow. And if you remember, we ended last video talking about how there were producers versus consumers. And so now we're going to take a look at how these things actually obtain their energy through things that are called feeding relationships. So what animals are going to eat what, how are animals producing their own food, things like that. So we're going to look at the first part is how does energy flow through our living ecosystems. So the relationship between producers and consumers connect organisms into feeding networks based on who eats whom. So that's again going back to the fact that there isn't a single animal out there or a single organism out there that could survive on their own. They're going to need some type of other organism to help them survive. And energy will flow through an ecosystem in one direction. So it starts from the sun to the autotrophs and then to the various heterotrophs. So again, so sun or then it could be the bacteria that use energy sources outside of the sun. So it would either start from the sun or inorganic compounds to the autotrophs and then to various heterotrophs. And so one way that this can flow is in something called a food chain. And a food chain is a series of steps in which organisms transfer energy by eating and being eaten. And then we will give an example of what this looks like. So they give the example in the marine food chains. It starts with the producers are microscopic algae and the top carnivore is four steps removed from the producer. So if you look, we have algae and then we can see the arrow always points to where the energy is going. So since the zooplankton are eating the algae, the algae gets the direct or the arrow pointing away from the algae towards the zooplankton. And then the zooplankton are getting eaten by the small fish. And then the small fish are being eaten by the squid. And then the squid is going to be eaten by the shark. And then nothing is going to eat the shark because it is the top dog. It is the biggest one in this food chain. However, things aren't always as simple as just a simple food chain. And then we have what are known as food webs. So ecologists describe a feeding relationship in an ecosystem that forms a network of complex interactions as a food web. And a food web will link all the food chains in an ecosystem together. So this will be a little more complex. As you can see, a web is a little more complex than a chain. And it will show all the possibilities of what can be eaten. And if you look here, this food web shows some of the feeding relationships in a salt marsh community. So if you can look here, we have, again, we have the grass that's being eaten by uh, the, what's called the sand hopper and the grasshopper. And then there's a little mouse that's eating that as well. But then that mouse is also going to be eating the grasshopper. And then the mouse is going to be eaten by the hawk. And then the hawk is eating the shrew. And the hawk is also eating that other bird. And there's just a lot more interactions than just one chain here. It's a lot more complex than just a simple food chain. It's all the relationships, everything that can eat everything, basically, is what is going to happen inside of a food web. And so that is, again, food web, all the possible relationships that could happen. And so then our next thing that kind of helps us understand our feeding relationships are things that are known as trophic levels. So trophic levels are going to be something important you're going to need to know. So each step in a food chain or food web is called a trophic level. So producers will make up our first trophic level. So they're, since they're at the first step, they're going to be our first trophic level. And then consumers will make up our second, third, and, our, and then continuing on depending on how many uh, levels we go up our higher trophic levels and each consumer depends on the trophic levels below for its energy so it's again everything the first trophic level at the bottom is basically going to be the basis for the energy for everything that is above it and we can show this different trophic levels in what are known as ecological pyramids and this will show us how energy is transferred among organisms in an ecosystem so the amount of energy or matter in an ecosystem can re be represented by what's known as an ecological pyramid. And an ecological pyramid is a diagram that shows the relative amounts of energy or matter contained within each trophic level in a food chain or food web. And so there are three different types of these pyramids. There be energy pyramids, biomass pyramids, and a pyramid of numbers. So the first one we're going to look at is an energy pyramid. And this energy pyramid will show the relative amount of energy available at each trophic level and only part of the energy that is stored in one trophic level is passed on to the next. So if we look we have 100% of our energy is at the bottom but then 
once let's say the bottom is the grass so then the grasshoppers eat the grass and the grasshoppers only take 10 percent of that energy from the grass and then let's say the mouse eats the grasshopper and then that only 10 percent of that energy so one percent of our total makes it up there and then if the hawk comes down and eat the mouse then only 0.1 percent of our energy is left again it just decreases by 10 percent each time and it says the more levels that exist between a producer and a top level consumer in an ecosystem the less energy that it remains from the original amount which we just said again we started with 100 at the bottom and by the time we make it to the top it's 0.1 percent and only about 10 percent of the energy available within one trophic level is transferred to organisms at the next trophic level again that's what it just shows there it decreases by 10 percent or i'm sorry only 10 percent of that total is passed on each time so it decreases and decreases and decreases as it goes up and so our next type of pyramid is a biomass pyramid and the total amount of living tissue within a given trophic level is called biomass so that's just the total amount of life at each level is called the biomass and it's usually expressed in terms of grams or organic matter per unit area so grams would probably be just like how much they weigh and a biomass pyramid will represent the amount of potential food available for each trophic level in an ecosystem so it'll really just show the total amount how much there actually is at each level so if you look we have 5,000 grams of grass and then we have 500 grams of chicken and then only 50 grams of human tissue by the time we make it up so that's what biomass means and then again we can see the greatest amount is always at the bottom that's where there's always going to be the most energy available is at the bottom so then our last one is a pyramid of numbers and this shows the actual number of individual organisms at each trophic level so simply this will show we have exactly how many flowers we have and then we have a bunch of how many rabbits mice and grasshoppers and then snakes and then at the top we have one hawk so it literally just gives us the amount of each at each level and for some ecosystems the shape of the pyramid of numbers is the same as, as that of energy and biomass pyramids so again sometimes it'll be largest to smallest at the top However, there are ecosystems where there are fewer producers than there are consumers, such as forest ecosystems, and the pyramid of numbers would not represent a typical pyramid at all. So sometimes this shape can change. It's not always going to be definite.